Question five starts off with a periodicity question and then it moves into um, periodic table group seven question. So the trend that they're after in part A is the atomic radius trend across a period. So it doesn't matter which period it is. This one's lithium to fluorine. The atomic radius decreases across any period and that's because the number of protons are increasing each time but the amount of shielding stays the same. And so the outer, ex the outer electrons experience stronger attraction from the increased nuclear charge. Bromide ion, Br- minus is the bromide ion. So instead of having 35 electrons, which the atom has, it has 36. And so you just roll out your electronic configuration for 36 electrons. So there it is there. The next part of the question, little twist at the end. So the student's got a test tube with some bromide ions in and they add silver nitrate, but then they automatically add a similar volume of um, dilute aqueous ammonia. So the question's asking, what will the student see at the end of all of that? So you've got to ask yourself, what will the silver nitrate do? Well, that will produce a cream precipitate. What will the aqueous ammonia do, the dilute aqueous ammonia? Well, that will partially dissolve the silver bromide precipitate, that cream silver bromide precipitate. And so the question saying, what will a student see at the end of all of that? And I've written there, and I think I should have written something slightly better. The cream precipitate will partially dissolve, so therefore the student will still see a cream precipitate. So that's what I would write now. The precipitation reaction that's taking place, the silver ions from the silver nitrate solution are reacting with the bromide ions from the bromide solution in the tube. And there's your silver bromide precipitate. So that's the green, sorry, the cream precipitate. Okay, so now a reaction um, straight out of the notes, the equation for the reaction between sodium hydroxide, aqueous sodium hydroxide and chlorine, there it is there. So we've got NaCl, NaClO and H2O. And remember we need two NaOHs to balance the equation. And the conditions for that one, we need cold dilute aqueous sodium hydroxide. And then it gives us a different equation, which is, it takes place under different conditions. And we're told that it's a disproportionation reaction. And again, we need to be thinking, what's disproportionation? They're actually going to ask us it here. But that's when the same element is oxidized and reduced in the same equation, same reaction. How do you show that? Well, you show it via oxidation numbers. That's exactly what they're asking you. So chlorine starts off with an oxidation number of zero because it's the element. In sodium chloride, chlorine has an oxidation number of minus one. And that's because group one in compounds are always plus one. So to keep the molecule, the substance, sorry, the substance neutral, it has to be minus one. Ignore this five, it's irrelevant to the oxidation number. And then in this one here, sodium chlorate, well, we've got a couple of substances or atoms we know about. Sodium's plus one still, group one. Oxygen is minus two each with three of those. And so to keep this substance overall neutral, it is plus five. If they asked you for the name of that, it would be called sodium chlorate five. So there's my answer. Disproportionation is where the same atom is oxidized and reduced. In this reaction, chlorine is reduced from Cl2 to NaCl. And then you must always give the oxidation number change. So it's going from zero to minus one in that case. It's also oxidized from Cl2 to NaClO3. Oxidation number changes from zero to plus five.